Welcome. In the last session, I came up to discussing reproduction in angiosperms. We shall continue uh, discussing reproduction in angiosperms in this uh, session also. So let's see. Reproduction. So here in case of uh, angiosperms, the reproduction also takes place by asexual methods. So angiospermic plants also reproduce by asexual methods. I am not going to discuss all those asexual methods. We will mainly concentrate on how angiosperms reproduce sexually. So that is sexual method. Okay, so under the sexual method, I told you that they have okay uh, the male sex organs male sex organs and those male sex organs are stamens and they also have the female sex organs are called pistils right and these uh, stamens and pistils are present in a flower okay so here the different parts of flower we call them floral parts and these floral parts are present on a swollen base called thalamus so on the thalamus we see the sepals okay so then we'll see the presence of uh, petals so these are petals the sepals and then we see the presence of stamens okay and at the center we will see the pistil okay and uh, when we see it from the top all these parts that is floral parts are present in four rings okay which i call them horals okay so one two three and the innermost horal right so this is the outermost horal and this will be the innermost horal okay so we know that the innermost horal will be consisting of pistils so it consists of pistils whereas the outermost horal it consists of it consists of sepals okay and uh, right after the sepals we see the petals and then these are stamens okay so uh, this is how the floral parts are arranged in four horals okay and i already told you the structure of uh, uh, stamen so the parts we have seen uh, it consists of uh, filament and anther so a long filament and this is anther okay so inside the anther there will be development of pollen grains and we also have seen about the pistil so that has uh, three parts okay so in case of pistil it has three parts the base is a swollen so the base is swollen so this is the ovary and this is the style and this is the stigma so three parts in case of a pistil and inside the ovary we find the presence of ovules okay and we also have seen that okay how the ovule will be seen okay so this is uh, how the ovule is seen right and inside that we see the embryo sac right 
here the embryo sac and uh, surrounding it is a tissue called new cellus and all that will be covered by okay integuments so we find integuments so later in the second year we will study all those things in detail okay so here i'm just uh, briefly telling how uh, the angiosperms reproduce okay so this embryo sac we know it's the female gametophyte okay female gametophyte and uh, inside the female gametophyte already we have seen okay the different parts okay antipodal suppose this opening is called micropyle and uh, always present towards the micropyle end will be the egg cell right so this is uh, how we see okay so three antipodals so already i have told in the last session three antipodals and uh, so we have seen two polar nuclei and there are two okay synergic cells and one egg cell so these two are synergic cells and this is egg cell all these cells are haploid antipodals are haploid okay so there is only one egg cell okay one egg cell so that is also haploid there are two synergic cells they are also haploid each is haploid okay now the pollen grains are released from anther okay so the pollen grains are released from anther and of course uh, those uh, pollen grains are developed so these pollen grains we refer them as the male gametophytes and these are developed inside the anther okay so inside the anther there are cells called microspore mother cells so these microspore mother cells will be haploid and they undergo the process of meiosis and produce microspores and produce microspores okay so if i take one microspore mother cell then i will get four microspores okay right so these microspores are the one which will develop into four pollen grains right and these pollen grains are released from anther and they will be uh, carried by okay wind water or by animals also okay so uh, animals uh, play a very important role okay in in case of these angiosperms okay for in transferring the pollen grains okay right so pollen grains are carried by okay wind or water or animals right so now the pollen grains once they come and settle on the stigma so they come and settle on the stigma okay so here in this okay so here the ovules okay or i'll take right so here is the ovule present we know this is a stigma this is a style and this is ovary okay and inside this is ovule now pollen grains they come and settle on the stigma okay so once they settle on the stigma they germinate and then 
they start producing a pollen tube. Okay, so this pollen tube grows through the okay style and this will have okay so two male gametes so it has two male gametes okay this is pollen tube and this is pollen grain okay and this uh, pollen tube grows okay so just i'm showing the direction okay so it finally now enters into the embryo sac that present inside the ovule so that's i'll just show here okay so here is the embryo sac so synergic cells and here is the egg cell there are two polar nuclei and three antipodals okay so this is how it is present and here the pollen tube okay comes here and then it enters into the embryo sac so it enters into the embryo sac and then okay here it uh, breaks open to release the male gametes so this is the pollen tube right and it has released the two male gametes it released the two male gametes into the embryo sac right so now one of the male gamete so one male gamete will fuse with the egg cell. So one male gamete will fuse with the egg cell. Already we know the male gamete is haploid and the egg cell is also haploid. Right now this is what we call fertilization. It's called fertilization. So one male gamete will fuse with the egg cell and the process is called fertilization or I call it the syngamy and this syngamy results in formation of zygote so that will be diploid in condition then what about the another male gamete so this one more male gamete will fuse with the secondary nucleus so this secondary nucleus will be deployed in condition so what happens is okay the two polar nuclei fuse so the two polar nuclei fuse and that result in the formation of a secondary nucleus secondary nucleus so you have to keep in mind that each polar nucleus is haploid so each polar nucleus is haploid so each polar nucleus is haploid so hence two polar nuclei when they okay fuse okay it results in the formation of secondary nucleus so that will become 2n so here it is n plus n so because i told you that each polar nucleus is haploid so when two such polar nuclei fuse it results in the formation of secondary nucleus so that's why i have mentioned here directly the secondary nucleus okay so here the male gamete will be haploid only that as okay there is a fusion of okay 2n plus n so that results in 3n okay so this is what we call triple fusion is called triple fusion okay like uh, one male gamete and secondary nucleus 
so which is uh, diploid will fuse and reserves okay in formation of a triploid condition so this we call it triple fusion so because there is a okay okay three nuclei involved in this case so we say it's a, a triple fusion okay so now the syngamy and triple fusion together so here the syngamy and triple fusion so together we refer it as double fertilization so we refer it as double fertilization and double fertilization is a unique character of angiosperms nowhere else so i did not discuss this in case of algae bryophytes pteridophytes or gymnosperms okay so no other uh, group of plants have this phenomenon called double fertilization and it is present only in case of angiosperms now i told that one male gamete one xl they fuse to form zygote so then what about this one male gamete which fused with the uh, secondary nucleus so this one results in the formation of okay primary endosperm nucleus results in the formation of primary endosperm nucleus so in short we call it pen so primary endosperm nucleus so this uh, pen will develop into endosperm okay so this endosperm will be triploid okay so as i have mentioned here okay 3n so this is a triploid condition so you have seen haploid diploid and this is an another condition okay triploid so this endosperm in case of angiosperms it is triploid in condition and the endosperm is put to the developing embryo to the developing embryo so we know that this zygote which formed now it will start becoming embryo okay so this will use this endosperm as a food okay and the zygote will go on dividing and results in the formation of embryo right so i hope uh, it's clear so i'll just mention here this double fertilization is unique to angiosperms is unique to angiosperms okay now once this uh, happens now what about the other cells which are present inside the embryo sac okay so uh, we know that inside the embryo sac we have uh, synergic cells okay two synergic cells and three antipodals are also present okay besides this the polar nuclei and egg cell now all these so that is uh, two synergic cells and three antipodals will degenerate okay so two synergic cells okay plus three antipodals so three antipodals so all of them okay so all these they degenerate so they all degenerate so hence you don't find all these antipodals and synergic cells okay after fertilization so you don't find after fertilization so what you will see is okay so this big cell okay inside that there is a triploid nucleus and here is the zygote okay so this is the zygote and this is the pen the primary endosperm nucleus so this is what you see 
after fertilization okay and we know that this pan later forms into endosperm and the zygote will use that endosperm and start dividing and develops into embryo and that embryo may have one cotyledon or two cotyledons if it has one cotyledon then it is a monocotyledon and if it has two cotyledons then the condition is dicotyledonous kind right next uh, by the time the zygote develops into embryo the ovules will develop into seeds so ovules will develop into seeds and the ovary will develop into fruit okay so the fruit will cover the seeds so hence here we don't see uh, the naked seeds okay so this is uh, how uh, sexual reproduction takes place in case of uh, angiospermic uh, plants okay so with this uh, i will end today's uh, session and in the next session i will discuss about plant life cycles and alternation of generations okay in plants uh, that will be the last part of uh, this chapter plant kingdom